गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू गेट अकेडमी ग्लोबल सो आई होप यू हैव एन्जॉयड द लास्ट चैप्टर दैट इज यूर प्लेन वे प्रपोगेशन नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द ट्रांसमिशन लाइन सो प्लीज वंस कमेंट मी वेदर एम आई ऑडिबल और नॉट इफ एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर और नॉट प्लीज कमेंट वंस so good evening rishika good evening milan good evening lakshmi yes so everything is clear uh, am i audible yes everything is clear okay rishika is saying everything is clear so uh, other students can also tell uh, if am i audible or not okay so let's start the new chapter which is your transmission line so the first is equivalent circuit of this transmission line so the equivalent diagram of the transmission line is having the four parameters first is resistance then inductance then conductance and capacitor so this is the equivalent circuit of the transmission line this is r this is l this is g which is not equal to 1 by r and it is c so this is the equivalent diagram of the transmission line hello milan okay so here the rlg are known as primary constant okay so these r l g c r l g and c are known as primary constant and uh, r is called resistance and all the parameters are defined per unit length okay so all the parameters are defined per unit length that means this is the resistance that means ohm per meter and if you say the inductance this is per unit length so it is henry per meter and now it is g so it is a conductance per unit length which is mu per meter and last is capacitance per unit length which is farad per meter so these all are the primary constant and this is how we define or denote the equivalent diagram of transmission line okay so this is how we define the 
equivalent diagram of the transmission line. So basically, the transmission line is a two conducting system. Okay, it is a two conducting system. Basically, transmission line is a two conducting system. Because in case of a, a transmission line, we will be having the two conductors. They may be placed parallel. They might be in like a coaxial cable. They might be in the form of microwave strip. But when we apply the source between these two conductors, the electromagnetic waves propagates along the length of the conductor. So this is the transmission line, and uh, in general, the transmission line is defined as the two-wire system. It doesn't matter that uh, what is the uh, type of the transmission line uh, basically we can say that it is a two wire or two conducting system in which we apply the source between them okay and the equivalent diagram to analyze this transmission line the equivalent diagram is rl gc having the four primary constant and there are certain reasons behind this uh, why these parameters are coming into the picture of the equivalent diagram of the transmission line. So, we are not going into that detail. Okay, Sachin, so antenna chapter is like that only uh, you might be having the problem. It depends on the logic and the concepts you are having and uh, whether you are able to apply it or not. Uh, so it depends on the logics and the concepts that you have learned and what you are uh, having, which kind of questions you are having. You do not need to study all the kind of questions uh, in the antenna, might be you were solving the questions which is out of the scope of the gate. So uh, it has to be, um, you can just uh, uh, solve the questions from the test series only. Uh, every test series questions of antenna should be solved that would be enough for gate exam if you are thinking of the gate exam then you do not need to bother about the chapter antenna just you need to uh, stick with the previous year gate questions and also with the uh, all different institutes test series the different kind of questions they are having in their test series uh, you should be able to solve those test series that would be enough for the chapter antenna okay So now we will understand what is the equation of the transmission line. So let us study the next topic which is transmission line equation like a plane wave equation. The next topic is transmission line equation. So let us say the wave is traveling in the positive z direction. So we will be having its equivalent diagram like the previously we have defined. And if it is traveling in the z direction, positive z direction, then how to how to define this distance. Uh, so we are having here the capacitance, these parameters how can we define. Now we are saying that this is the one small element of the transmission line. This is R. Suppose uh, the input voltage is Vsz and uh, the output voltage is Vsz plus delta z because actually the length of this transmission line we are considering is delta z. 
delta z means it is having very very small unit of the transmission line that is known as unit element of the transmission line so you are knowing the length so if you want to apply the network theory to uh, find the transmission line equation in the form of voltage and current then you should have the lump parameter and the lump parameter can be calculated by multiplying with the length because this is defined as per unit length so if you know the length of the transmission line which is the delta z so when you multiply it you will get the absolute value that is nothing but a lump value so this is l into delta z and it is g into delta z and it is c into delta z so in this way we can define the voltages now the current flowing through this now the current flowing through this transmission line is say is into z initially it is flowing from the source so is into z and the current is leaving here the current which is leaving here is is into z plus delta z the current will change because few current will flow from this branch also when the current will coming from the here uh, this particular source it will divide into two branches so these two branches are here good evening uh, rahila okay now uh, we have to apply the kvl and the kcl and uh, let's apply the kvl in the outer loop so apply kvl in outer loop okay so this is plus minus uh, sorry minus plus vsz so we are having vs into z minus is into z into r into delta z minus this is l di by dt the voltage across the inductor is l di by dt and uh, d upon dt can be written as j omega so we are writing this j omega l into delta z into is z now here we are having minus vs into z plus delta z equal to 0 so this vs into z minus vs into z plus delta z is equal to now we are taking this r and l term in the right hand side so we are having is into z common and delta z also common and we will get r plus j omega l now let's divide it by delta z and vs z minus vs z plus delta z divided by delta z equal to is into z and r plus j omega l now we know that this uh, delta z is very very small the smaller will be the value of delta z the better will be the analysis of the transmission line so let's take the limit limit of this delta z tending to 0 it should be very very small so if we take the limit of the limit delta both the side limit delta z tends to 0 so this will be the differential form now dvsz upon dz equal to this is is into z and delta z there is no term of delta z so when we take the limit delta z tends to 0 it does not affect on the right hand side so this is equation number one okay so are you getting this point now differentiating this equation one for further use so when we differentiate the equation number one we get dv s square upon dz square is equal to d into isz upon dz and r plus j omega l put it equation number two
okay now let's apply the node at n nodal analysis at node n here so when you apply the nodal at n the current leaving i am assuming as positive so the current entering is negative so the current entering is minus i s z the current entering is minus i s and the current leaving is plus i s z plus delta z and uh, the current leaving here is voltage voltage is v s z plus delta z the current is voltage divided by impedance one upon impedance is what admittance and the admittance the equivalent admittance of these two will be because one is the conductance only and another is the capacitance so impedance of the capacitance is 1 upon j omega c so when we invert it we get admittance which is known as susceptance okay so this is the j omega c so we will get g plus j omega c okay and what is the current what is the current flowing through this branch so this is the current flowing through that branch and this is equal to what zero now we can take this current term right hand side so i s z plus delta z uh, sorry i s z minus i s z plus delta z equal to v s z plus delta z and g plus j omega c okay so we are bringing this current terms in the right hand side so this will be negative and this will become positive and this is same this will remain same now uh, yes okay one more thing which we have not written here is g into delta z and c into delta z was there so this delta z should also be there and now it is equal to 0 and uh, this delta z should also be here so let's write it here okay now if we divide the delta z we will get is into z minus is into z plus delta z whole divided by delta z equal to vs into z plus delta z and uh, g plus j omega c now again the we have to take the z delta z tends to 0 so when we take the limit this delta z tends to 0 is z minus is z plus delta z divided by delta z equal to limit delta z tends to 0 v s z plus delta z and g plus j omega c so when the delta z tends to 0 so this will be 0 and uh, this will become the differential form d i s z divided by d z and it is now v s z and uh, g plus j omega c put it equation number 3 and for further use again differentiate with respect to current uh, distance sorry differentiate current with respect to distance so this is d is square i s z upon d z is square and uh, d v s z divided by d z and uh, g plus j omega c this is your equation number 4 so now we have got the four equations and uh, with the help of these four equations we have to just find the transmission line equation so tell me is it clear up to this point or not Okay, Lakshmi. 
थैंक यू फॉर रिप्लाइंग ओके सो वी आर हैविंग द इक्वेशन नंबर टू विच इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ द सेकेंड ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल एंड डी आई एस जेड अपॉन डी जेड वी कैन पुट फ्रॉम द इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री सो वैन वी सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यू फ्रॉम इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री दिस इज डी वी एस जेड अपॉन डी जेड स्क्वायर एंड वैन वी सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यू फ्रॉम इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री वी विल गेट वी एस जेड एंड जी प्लस जे ओमेगा सी एंड आर प्लस जे ओमेगा एल सो वैन वी सॉल्व दिस वी विल गेट डी स्क्वायर वी एस जेड अपॉन डी जेड स्क्वायर माइनस गामा स्क्वायर वी एस जेड इक्वल टू जीरो सो दिस इज द ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इक्वेशन फॉर वोल्टेज वेव दिस इज फॉर वोल्टेज वेव ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इक्वेशन फॉर वोल्टेज वेव Similarly, when we substitute the value of voltage d V S Z upon d S Z d Z in the equation number four, in the equation number four we are having the current equation, and from that equation number four we will get the value of expression of current wave. So, from equation number four you are having this d square. आई एस जेड अपॉन डी जेड स्क्वायर इक्वल टू डी वी एस जेड अपॉन डी जेड वी कैन राइट आई एस जेड एंड आर प्लस जे ओमेगा एल एंड इन इक्वेशन नंबर फोर वी आर वी आर हैविंग द जी प्लस जे ओमेगा सी सो डी स्क्वायर आई एस जेड डिवाइडेड बाई डी जेड स्क्वायर इक्वल टू This is I S Z. Let's write it here. Minus gamma square I S Z equal to zero. So again, the product R plus J omega L and G plus J omega C is nothing but your gamma square. So it is a transmission line equation for current wave. transmission line equation for current wave now we can write now we can write the solution of this equation number uh, transmission line equation and current for voltage and uh, transmission line a uh, this equation will be vsz is equal to v not plus e to the power minus gamma z plus v not minus e to the power plus gamma z and uh, isz is i not plus e to the power minus gamma z plus i not minus e to the power plus gamma z okay so these two are the solution of this transmission line equation for voltage and current wave okay and where this gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta which is also equal to r plus j omega l and g plus j omega c the alpha and beta having their usual meanings that is alpha is a attenuation constant and beta is a phase constant so these two are having their usual meanings which we know from the plane wave equation the gamma is known as propagation constant its unit is meter inverse the gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta and uh, alpha is known as attenuation constant which is used for the change in amplitude as the wave travels the change in amplitude and uh, the beta is the phase difference which is phase shift per unit distance and uh, it is in terms of primary constant root over r plus j omega l this is l right this is l 
इंडक्टेंस एंड जे ओमेगा सी जी प्लस जे ओमेगा सी नाउ वी आर हैविंग द नेक्स्ट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म दिस इज नोन एज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इंपोर्टेंस so characteristic impedance is denoted by z not and it is defined as ratio of forward traveling voltage wave and forward traveling forward traveling current wave it is defined as ratio of forward traveling voltage wave and forward traveling current wave at any point of the transmission line at any point of transmission line so this is z not which is defined as root over r plus j omega l divided by g plus j omega c which is also defined as the forward traveling voltage wave divided by forward traveling current wave or minus of forward traveling voltage wave divided by so reverse traveling voltage wave divided by reverse traveling current wave the minus sign denotes the wave is traveling in the negative direction here v not plus and i not v not minus they are having their usual meaning again we know that the v not plus is the forward traveling voltage wave and v not minus is the forward traveling uh, v not minus is the reverse traveling voltage wave so it is a forward wave and it is the reverse traveling wave so this is the forward wave and it is you can call backward wave or the reverse traveling wave backward here also it is forward and reverse so this is the simple notation which we were using in the plane wave so that is why v not plus and i not minus or i not plus we are not defining that because we know why we consider the v not plus and i not plus for forward traveling and what is the meaning of e to the power minus gamma z and plus gamma z in the case of forward traveling and in case of reverse traveling what is the significance of taking the v not plus or e to the power plus gamma z or e to the power minus gamma z is it okay is it clear to everyone is it clear to everyone so meaning of i not plus i not minus and v not plus and v not minus is clear i am sure uh, it is clear to you now now let's discuss the lossless transmission line
So, the condition for the transmission line to be lossless is R and G should be 0. R and G should be 0 for a line to be lossless. For a transmission line to be lossless, R and G should be 0. So, gamma is equal to alpha plus J beta and it is equal to R plus J omega C and G plus J omega L. So, R and G are 0. So, this alpha plus J beta R and G are 0. So, it will be J omega C from the first term multiplied with J omega sorry this is J omega L and J omega C from the first and second term we will get. So, J omega is your outside this root and root over L C and it is alpha plus J beta. On comparing both the sides we will get the alpha equal to 0 which is the attenuation constant and beta will be omega root L C which is the phase constant. Now, the another term which we usually calculate for any particular uh, medium in wave propagation similarly in the transmission line also alpha beta V p V p is equal to omega by beta which is 1 upon root over L into C 1 upon root over L into C. So, these three parameters we generally calculate for the plane wave also. Now, the characteristic impedance, the characteristic impedance Z naught is defined as R plus J omega L and G plus J omega C. If R and G are 0, it will be 0 plus J omega L divided by 0 plus J omega C and when you solve it, you will get root over L by C. So, this is the characteristic impedance root over L by C and it is a real quantity, real quantity that means imaginary part is 0. So, this is the transmission line equation for lossless transmission line. Now, the next one is your distortionless transmission line.
distortionless transmission line. So the distortionless transmission line condition for a transmission line to be distortionless is R by G is equal to L by C. This condition you have to apply for a line to be distortion line. This condition should be satisfied. So what is this condition? So according to this, this gamma is equal to alpha plus J beta which is root over R plus j omega l and g plus j omega c ok. So, if I take r and g common, so this alpha plus j beta will be root over r and g you have taken common. So, 1 plus j omega l by r and and it is 1 plus j omega c by g and uh, we can write it as root over r g and uh, inside the root because l by r is equal to g by c from here you can write this l by r is equal to c by g. So, you can convert it into any form. So, let us write 1 plus j omega l by r and the second term also 1 plus j omega l by r okay from the condition of the distortionless line. So, it will be root over R g and one term will be coming out from this uh, root uh, and it will become 1 plus j omega L by R. So, when you multiply it you will get root over R g plus j into uh, omega and uh, let us take uh, this L by R inside the integration. So, this is R into G and L square divided by R square. We are taking this L by R inside the root. So, this alpha plus J beta is equal to root over R G plus J omega root over root over 1 L we are keeping and R G L divided by uh, L G divided by R, L into G divided by R will be left ok. This one R will get cancelled, this R and this R will get cancelled, one L I am separating and L G by R. So, if you will see that this L G by R we can also write it as C from the given condition the L G by R can also be written as C. So, alpha plus J beta this is root over R G and J omega root over L into C. So, when we compare, when we compare these two, we will get alpha is equal to root R G and beta is equal to omega root L C. So, beta value of beta is same, but the in case of distortionless transmission line alpha is not 0. And because the beta is same, the value of Vp will be same. Vp is equal to how much? Omega by beta and beta is equal to omega root Lc. So, we will get 1 upon root Lc. So, the value of phase velocity will remain same. And uh, the characteristic impedance will also be R plus J omega L and uh, G plus J omega C if I take this R and G common in the numerator and denominator R and G common, we will get 1 plus J omega L by R divided by 1 plus J omega C by G and L by R is equal to C by G again L by R is equal to C by G. So, if you write R by G here 1 plus j omega L by R divided by 1 plus j omega C by G and this C by G is replaced by L by R this will get sell each other and it will give Z naught is equal to root over R by G and root over L by C because R by G is equal to L by C from this condition 
So the characteristic impedance also same as the lossless line. The characteristic impedance is also same as the transmission line. So all the four parameters we have calculated it. Now the next one is third is low loss transmission line. So for low loss transmission line R is very very less than J omega L and G is very very less than J omega C. If transmission line satisfies this condition it will be a low loss transmission line. So how to prove the value of alpha and beta? So the value of gamma is alpha plus j beta which is root over again starting from the basic equation r plus j omega l and g plus j omega c. Now this time we will take this j omega l into j omega c common. So we will get 1 minus r by j omega l and 1 minus g upon j omega c if you take the j omega a and j omega c common. From here we will get j square which is uh, uh, j actually inside the integration and omega root l c uh, outside the square root and 1 plus r upon Yes, this is r plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus j r upon omega l power 1 by 2. This is 1 minus j g upon omega c and power 1 by 2. I have taken j omega l common so the there will be a plus sign in between them and uh, when we uh, take the j in the numerator we will be having a minus sign. Okay. Now because this J omega L is very very greater than compared with the R. So this R upon J omega L is very very less than 1. So if it is very very less than 1, we can approximate it by the binomial expansion and it would become J R upon 2 omega L and 1 minus J G upon 2 omega C. Okay? We know that if x is very very less than 1 then 1 plus x to the power n can be approximately written as 1 plus nx. Okay, so that is what we are using here and when you multiply it, when you multiply these two terms you will get 1 minus j r upon 2 omega l minus j g upon 2 omega c plus r g upon 4 into omega square l c. And already this omega square LC will be very very greater than uh, very very greater than one because when we take the product of these two, these two terms are very very greater than one. So this term is negligible. Okay. This term is negligible, and when we multiply this, so alpha plus j beta will be j omega root LC along with this. This is plus omega root lc multiplied with r upon 2 omega l and plus omega root lc g upon 2 omega c we will get and from here you will see hello
so uh, when we calculate this so omega will get cancelled and uh, when we take this uh, l inside the root we will get r by 2 root over c by l and here also this omega will cancel and we will get g by 2 root over when we keep this inside this is c square so uh, this will be l by c ok so this is the value of alpha in case of low loss transmission line and the condition of the low loss transmission line i have given you ok now if you compare the value of beta it is very simple so the beta is same omega root over lc so omega root over lc alpha and beta so because the beta is same in all the previous two cases and in this case also we will be having the vp same which is 1 upon root over lc now we have to calculate the characteristic impedance characteristic impedance z naught is r plus j omega l and g plus j omega c r plus j omega l and g plus j omega c and it is again we are keeping this j omega l and j omega c common so it is 1 minus j r upon omega l and it is 1 minus j g upon j omega c ok. So, this j omega and j omega will get cancelled and we will get root over l by c and it is like 1 minus j r upon omega l to the power 1 by 2 and for the denominator it is the power minus 1 by 2. Okay. So, again we will approximate it with the binomial expansion and we will get L by C in the bracket 1 minus j r upon 2 omega L and 1 minus j g upon 2 omega C. So, when we multiply root over L by C in bracket 1 minus j 1 minus j r upon 2 omega l minus j g upon 2 omega c plus r g upon 4 omega square l into c. And root over L by C minus root over L by C in bracket R upon 2 omega L if I take this minus sign common what will happen ok. So, because there is a minus sign so this minus minus become plus. So, when it become plus it will be plus and when we take the minus sign so it will be the minus sign here. 2 omega c and this will be neglected. So, the last term will be neglected same as in case of alpha. In case of alpha also we neglected the same term. So, because the last term is very very small in compare with 1. So, we have neglected it and uh, after multiplication we will get this and also the j, the j also left. So, this is the imaginary part. So, if if you make the imaginary part 0, if imaginary part of characteristic impedance is 0, then, then this root over L by C 
एंड आर अपॉन टू ओमेगा एल माइनस जी अपॉन टू ओमेगा सी मस्ट बी जीरो एंड वेन यू इक्वेट इट यू विल गेट आर बाय जी इज इक्वल टू एल बाय सी सो दिस इज द कंडीशन ऑफ डिस्टोर्शन लेस लाइन ओके सो ए लो लॉस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन हैविंग ए लो लॉस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन हैविंग रियल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इंपिडेंस बिकम ए डिस्टोर्शन लेस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन ओके ए लो लॉस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन is said to be distortionless if the characteristic impedance of the line is real so you can write it here a low loss transmission line is said to be real if imaginary part of z not is zero or you can also call it as the characteristic impedance is real you can also call it as characteristic impedance is real the imaginary part of characteristic impedance is zero or the characteristic impedance is real okay so now open the workbook you are having the pdf of the workbook now open the workbook and uh, let's solve question number 31 so question number 31 says air line has a characteristic impedance z not is equal to 70 ohm and the phase constant is beta is equal to 3 radian per meter and the frequency is 100 megahertz okay so these are the values the inductance and the capacitance we have to calculate the inductance and the capacitance okay and uh, air line transmission line air line line means air is filled between the two conductor okay so it means that it is a lossless transmission line so what is the meaning of air line now air line air line is lossless transmission line so air line means lossless and uh, for lossless the characteristic impedance is 70 or its formula is l by c put it equation number 1 and the value of beta beta is equal to 3 and it is equal to omega root lc we put it equation number 2 if we multiply these two equation we will get 210 is equal to omega into l this root c will get cancelled so we will get inductance which is 210 divided by 2 pi into f f is 10 to power 8 so you will solve it you will get the value of inductance when we divide it 
this two equation we will get this 70 by 3 equal to root over L by C and uh, 1 upon omega root over LC. So, this is 1 upon omega into C. So, from here you will get the value of C which is uh, 3 divided by 70 into omega that means 10 to power 8. So, you will get the value of C also. Now, next let us solve question number 32. So, question number 32 says a distortionless line, a distortionless line having the characteristic impedance 60 ohm and alpha is equal to 20 milli Napier per meter and the velocity is 0 0.6 times of velocity of light. You have to calculate the R and C and also the wavelength. L is coming as 334 uh, Lakshmi, uh, th 334, yes, okay. So, when you calculate it, you will get 334 uh, nano Henry per meter, I guess, nano Henry per meter. And it is 68.2. Okay, so the characteristic impedance Z naught is the for the lossless transmission and also it is root over L by C, so put it equation number 1, okay. And the value of alpha is root over Rg and it is equal to 20 into 10 to the power minus 3, put it equation number 2. And the velocity is, it is 1 upon root Lc. So, it is uh, 0 0.6 into 3 into 10 to power 8, put it equation number 3. We have to calculate R and C. So, if you want to calculate C, let us uh, divide it by V upon Z naught. Okay. So, V upon Z naught if you calculate. So, it is 1 upon root LC and uh, okay. so we have to multiply this not we have we should multiply this to get the value of c okay so root l will get cancel and we get 1 upon c so 1 upon the capacitance or you can say the capacitance value directly the capacitance is 1 upon z naught z naught is 60 and v v is 0 0.6 into 3 into 10 to the power 8 so from here you will get the value of capacitance and once you calculate the value of capacitance, you can calculate the value of uh, inductance and the resistance. Resistance we have to calculate. Okay, so from in equation number 1, we can also write it as root over r by g because it is a distortionless line. So, root over l by c is also root over r by g and if you want to calculate the value of r, you have to multiply the equation number 1 and 2. Okay. So, when you multiply equation number 1 and 2, you will get uh, root over r g multiplied with root over r by g and uh, these two will be equal. So, this is 60 into 20 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, this R is equal to 1200 into 10 to the power minus 3 that means 1.2 ohm per meter. So, the value of R is 1.2 ohm per meter. Yeah, so, it is option A or B and uh, when you solve it, this should be 92.59, 92.59 92 picofarad it should be coming in picofarad per meter. So, this is the value of R and C. Now, if you want to calculate the wavelength at 100, so lambda is equal to velocity upon frequency. Velocity is 0 0.6 times of 3 into 10 to power 8 and uh, the frequency is I think 100 megahertz. Yes, 100 megahertz means 100 into 10 to power 6. 
so this is 10 to the power 8 this 10 to the power 8 will get cancel and lambda is equal to 1.8 meter you will get so the question number 33 this is your question number 33 you will get the wavelength as 1.8 meter so let's solve question number 34 in question number 34 the lossy transmission line having the propagation constant this gamma is equal to 2 plus j5 and the characteristic impedance z0 is equal to 50 plus j0 ohm and it is meter inverse now we have to calculate the alpha and uh, uh we have to calculate rlgc and the omega is given which is 10 to the power 6 radian per second okay so as you can see that uh, the gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta so if you compare the value of alpha is equal to 2 and because you can see that the characteristic impedance is having only the real part the binary part is zero so it is real so if it is real it is a distortion less okay so it is a distortion less line and if it is distortion less line it is root over rg okay put it equation number 1 and uh, beta beta is equal to 5 which is root over sorry omega root lc omega root lc put it equation number 2 characteristic impedance z not is equal to 50 which is root over l by c or root over r by g we are having these three equations and we have to find the four different values that is L, r l g c so when we multiply equation number 1 and 2 by multiplying equation number 1 and 2 you will get alpha into z0 which is 100 and this g will give, get cancel and you will get the value of r so when we multiply you will get 100 ohm per meter so this is the first parameter which you can directly calculate by multiplying equation number 2 and 3 that is beta into z0 you will get 250 which is equal to omega and l so l is equal to how much 250 divided by omega omega is 10 to the power 6 so hence you will get l is equal to 250 micro henry per meter so the second parameter which you can calculate by multiplying the equation number 1 uh, 2 and 3 now divide equation number 1 and 3 1 by 3 okay so let's divide alpha divided by z not alpha is root over rg and uh, z0 is root over r by g so this r and r will get cancel this will be g 
So, g is equal to alpha by z naught, alpha is 2, z naught is 50. So, we will get 0 0.04 mo per meter. Okay, now divide 2 by 3 to get the value of c. So, divide 2 by 3 that means uh, beta divided by z naught. Okay, so, beta is uh, omega root L c and uh, z naught is root over L by c. So, this root L will get cancel beta is how much 5, z naught is how much 50, omega is 10 to the power 6, this root L cancel then c we will get c is equal to 0 0.1 micro farad per meter c is equal to 0 0.1 micro farad per meter so l is 250 c is 0 0.1 r 100 g 0.04 which is your option b so the correct answer for this particular question will be option b so very simple to calculate if you just simply multiply and divide the equations of uh, uh, alpha, beta, r and uh, alpha, beta and characteristic impedance and velocity of light, we are having the four equations and if you will just multiply and divide, you can easily calculate the value of primary constant and this type of question is generally asked in your gate. Okay, so I think uh, for the today's session it is sufficient. Now uh, in the tomorrow session we will discuss about the input impedance of the transmission line and also discuss in the input impedance in the different length of the transmission line and also solve a few questions related to that. Also we will discuss some reflection coefficient and the voltage reflection voltage standing wave ratio. Okay, so this is it for the today's session and uh, we will be coming tomorrow at the same time around 5 pm and uh, we will be discussing about the more topics of transmission line. Thank you.